in our Western society, our Western society has um, gentrified what ancient people, people of the past, used to have mass dances, exorcisms, to really bring out the dark side of themselves and things, like that, just to, to dance it out. That was part of our culture before it was gentrified and everything is just clouded over and the dark side is like, you know, we don't want to know about this. But it's a very important part of our being. It's very important for us to evolve into healing, into um, dealing with these situations, to really, you know, look at the dark side, look at it, perform it. And it's also looking at your own dark side, because it's not just about me preaching out there. It's like, you know, you recognise this, I recognise this. So it's my own, my own exorcism as well. It helps me personally to evolve and be more caring and, and aware of these negative forces within the self as well as, and, and, and to give light. You've got the darkness that gives light to the positive and the, and the, the beautiful. Not only is it a, a, a protest or a show or wake up, it's also a ceremony, a ritual. It's a ritual, it's a journey in its own right of, of a beginning and an end and a transformative experience taking place within myself and the people around me. So the character is in that place, it's a sublim subliminally, like it'll be there on the side or in your face, but it's there, and it's there part of the, the story, that's overall story, that's un, 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 um, unravelling itself in front of you with this action or with this, this uh, performance. Greedozer grew out of uh, the Middle Head campaign. Before, um, my costumes were a bit more sort of cosmic, light. Uh, it was very light and and um, and happy, you know, and um, empowering in another form. The uh, greed dozer grew out of sitting in the in in the the forest that was knocked down, and in that in that situation, um, through the night, I just got this voice in my head said, "Greed dozer and company," because I saw these like this monster. And I just said, all right, I'll, I just painted that onto black plastic with a, a skull mask and a cardboard. So it just grew out of that. And that became my, my disguise at actions for the rest of my stay at Middle, middle Head. And that was my cover. And then I, from there on, I stylized it, I, you know, gas mask stylized the gas mask, the costume evolved in different fabric bits and pieces and I extracted um, from graffiti. I used to collect bits of graffiti, write it down in a book, different slogans and, and I selected uh, bits and pieces to form the costume um, and just sew in bits and pieces until um, you know we had Greed Dozer and company work, consume, be silent, die, I rely on the apathy. They're all bits and pieces from different forms of graffiti and, um, and slogans that I picked up. And we didn't have that sort of uh, iconic image uh, when I looked around. It dawned on me as I moved further into, the, into, my, into that costume and developed that character that the uh, iconic image is not, has, was not developed not in this country and not, uh, not much overseas. I uh, haven't seen it yet. So um, it became something and I've become aware of it and people keep 
egging me on, say, yeah, keep doing it. It's, it's really, you know, we need this, this image in our story, in the story of today. He made him. He's a social activist. He's a great world-traveling social activist from Nippon, Australia, which is the sister city of Woodstock. They were born because of the Woodstock Festival. That town he lives in was formed after the festival. They wanted to go and live the ideals that they were in the air, was in the air in those times. And they started Nippon, so they just were becoming our sister city. As far as uh, working in a gallery, it, it's a limited audience. It's it's a pre, it's a it's people that go into these spaces. It's a certain audience. Out in the out at these actions, it would incorporate media, media and people that, that as a happening as a happening, it it is to to get people who are not who, who come across it to raise questions within themselves uh, in a surprise manner, is to spring it on people, is to appear in public um, with this costume, you all, all of a sudden separate yourself from the normal ongoing, going from point A to B to your work or, or, or um, in a cosy situation. You take them into, make them feel uncomfortable in, in, and, and bring them to start thinking about help them to change because usually you're talking to the choir in a gallery you know, people come in there and also um, it's 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 a staged event in a in a gallery when you do a happening it you don't know where it's going to go it's a happening it's something um, and it also involves um, challenging the system it's also finding new levels of non-violent direct action where it holds back, um, it legitimises the protest. That's another thing, that legitimise my action um, as not as something as, as saying no without any sort of um, sign up there to, to, to say that it's what it is. I had it all there, so this is why I'm here. The props um, help to make it grander. I mean, I, I developed the, um, the the toxic tower. These um, from as a stand, having you know steel drums, and these steel drums formed something that which was high, and I could and and it could hang banners and so forth, and all of that built a picture. It's just building a picture in, out there. It's a set. So basically, I developed a set for Greed Dozer and developing a set which was both that uh, to, to bring out the, uh, the, the toxic wastes out there, the toxic um, symbols and at the same time the vision in the flags, like expressing the vision through flags and, and banners and the, the flags were great because flags would, would be up in the sky and it, 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 uh, it, it has some sort of effect on people and on myself you know, when I dance with flag. I'm up there just with with what it's about, you know, it's great. So I developed that and and different different arrangements of flags. Um, yeah I could you know it's it's like painting. It's just painting out in the in in the environment on a grand on a scale that people could look at. The protesters have gathered at Butler Island for a final stand against the coming of the bulldozer. The Franklin blockade, um, the Australian Conservation Foundation and the, the um, Tasmanian Wilderness Society wanted the energy from northern rivers with what we want up this way with Terrania and, 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 um, and Nightcap which were very successful in stopping. So I joined the, joined the, the, um, 
the journey down to to uh, Tasmania with uh, a group of us we call ourselves NAG, which grew out of the Nightcap Action Group, the Nimbin, the Nimbin Action Group, uh, Nomadic Action Group. And as a group, um, we um, we set up a camp upriver. And um, my area was in creating props and and um, and the theatre, developing the theatre. And um, that uh, that grew into quite a like the Bentley blockade grew into quite a big um, a big campaign, which changed the nature of the environmental movement, which was very small at the time, was just little pockets into a national um, movement with the Wilderness Society and and also birthing of the Greens movement in general, because uh, uh, Bob Brown, who got his got well known through through to Franklin, went on to create the Greens Party. Let's walk gently. Let's walk gently. On the hallowed ground at Bentley. On the hallowed ground at Bentley. Let's stand arm in arm. Let's stand arm in arm. It's amazing times we're at. We're at this crossroads. You know, I really feel that the you know the critical mass that we're hoping for, big flip and the consciousness and and attitudes will change because the people been working on it. You got all these TED talks about you know a, a totally new culture of collaboration. You know, not on competition but collaborating. You know, you get your trip together and then you work with so and so and so and so. And it's not around money. It's about quality of life, caring for the earth and all that, and you work out your exchange in whatever. The Bentley site really presented uh, a, a lot of opportunities uh, which I, I explored and had plenty of time to rearrange. First of all, it had a shape. It had this uh, nice um, area of, of an entrance and out there on a, on a field. So there was a flat area and growing and building from a flat area, you can build your set like a stage where you have a flat state, a bare, a bare surface, and then building on it. So it, it was, um, you know, um, the tripods were put up by, by different people. Uh, well, there was that one big tripod and all these other installations. And then, the, and then arranging the banners and the other installations to, to give it expression. And, that expression just grew from um, playing around. It's all playing, and and uh, giving you the, and 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 reviewing and playing and looking at it, and standing back, it's just like standing back with a brush and looking at a canvas and coming back and forth and just working on this canvas. The art and the music of activism, the songs, um, the. The, the sort of the visual art, and particularly the performance art as well, is absolutely built into that fabric of activism. I mean, I find it, you know, almost impossible to imagine a blockade, for example, without simultaneously seeing and conjuring up, you know, the art and the activism that's there. I mean, what what would the Greet the Dawn at Bentley be um, without the angel on the tripod, without Benny and the, you know, and, and the mythical creatures that um, Benny and the angel on the tripod have really become for us? and sustaining ones as well. And thank you very much, and they look beautiful dancing together too. It's a match made in um, activism. But... Um... That was the best thing. The tripod with the angel, that whole thing coming down with the people. That, that, that image was a great, a great, the best image coming out of it the Bentley blockade as far as art and image. The interplay with the angel was um, was bringing that uh, the dark and the and the light. It made the dark side really look good and then you had the uplift of the angel that took people out into the 
very positive uh, space and empowering space. The angel and very empowering. That arrangement was worked out quite fine. That it was, it was something that evolved. It was not planned. We kept pushing different boundaries, and the end product was this wonderful space, and with the sacred fire, everybody else. It was, it was a, a it, it was you know a, a, a group effort, and um, that's the power of of, um, of um, collaborative arts. Bentley was wonderful because it was a collaboration of everybody's idea for an end product of really bringing out strong statements, um, um, working up ideas, um, strengthening the blockade, um, uh, weakening the opposition through through our our installations and imagery and and uh, community. I declare this place coal seam gas free. For future generations and forevermore, for clean water, clean earth, <laughs> and liberty. <laughs> there's light at the end of the tunnel, as I say. There's light at the end of the darkness. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> but as a but we've got to keep challenging with our imagery. We've got to keep challenging. I mean, it's um, um, it's an ongoing pursuit. I mean, the charges are really outrageous. So I'll get it in the. I'll see what they're going to think. But they they just yeah they, they it doesn't it doesn't uh, feel comfortable. You know, it's not comfortable. I don't feel comfortable about what they're trying to do. I never do. <laughs> I've kept with the um, with the that dark side character. It's part of my iconography. I've kept with it for the simple reason that people uh, they identify me, or people get to see me. They know um, that first of all, they know a bit of the history and its development. Also, they they can trace back to the the different campaigns that I'm involved with and all the links to it. It's really wonderful now in this age of the of the computer where you can really um, follow threads from that costume. Once you see that costume and you can follow threads by Googling my name or when you see the, the image, uh, the image would say, oh, I recognise, I know, comes from. And also it attracts certain people to me. I've met different people over the history of that costume who have been empowered by it, who have uh, um, uh, gone on to research certain things it sort of struck a chord with them that it was it's something that they have to put their life to to really change their lives and and do something about it's been a very effective piece for um, bringing people together as well when people see that costume appear and <coughs> they realize this this issue must be serious because you know that benny zabel who's been doing it for a while, he's still doing it. It's also saying, look, the long, the long journey is, is, um, is part of the process of, of coming to a resolution and finding change take place. You see the change take place. So it's, it's really important piece of iconography, it's still in the development of, of being part of a, um, um, an icon for the future as well. All kinds of ideas can come out of that character, which, um, I hope will uh, will because we've really got to keep mining people from generation to generation that we've got to deal with this toxic um, corporate um, um, the inhuman way of treating our our world. The other thing about the costume is this very um, having a costume and doing things in mime and not using my voice it, it conserves my energy. I can just focus on just certain elements and the longevity of the performance is due to the stature, the quietness within myself, the, uh, the focus, the time lapse. So I work with a different sort of uh, a spatial element in the performance and things develop 
out of that that I've never thought. So it's part of the language, it's part of the expression. It's a non, non-verbal expression, which if you cultivate it, it, it does add up to something in these people's heads, I would think. We are rare and endangered species. Very much so. The reward is in the doing, the learning, in the doing. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's where I get my juice. People assume that politicians can, can um, change the world because they are the leader, but they are, are bound by the, the, the government policy and pressure from the corporates and the culture. And it's, it's us from the grassroots to, to move that energy from that level so those people that are in power start making, you build the bridge for these changes. You, you help to that transformation. It mightn't happen instantly, but it will, it gradually changes because um, the protest seriously is to get people's attention to serious issues of our, what our culture is doing to our environment, which you are aware right now with climate change. We are aware that we're, we're, on a, we're, we're on a crash course. So to change all of that, we really need to tune, question our, our dark side, question how we live and transform so that we're healers rather than just destroyers in our community, in ourselves, in our community and in, on, on planet Earth. That's a good finish. <laughs> Millions of little things will save this world. A time of love, a time of hate, a war of peace, a time of war, a time of peace. Time you may embrace, a time you may refrain, a time. Let, it, let there be peace, let's work on peace. Yeah.